73.5% alcohol by volume. That's 147 proof, everyone. What's up, everyone? I am Jason C, and today we are talking light whiskey, a popular new whiskey we are seeing both in whiskey blends, bourbon blends, and straight up on the shelf from craft distilleries as well. But the one brand in light whiskey making some noise lately is called Obtanium. It's from Cat's Eye Distilling. Let's take a look at what makes light whiskey a light whiskey, the history behind it, and why I think this once unpopular new category in whiskey is getting popular now, right here on the Mass and Drum. All right, so let's break it down. The late 1960s, American distilleries were struggling to make money with whiskey sales going down every single year. Now the sexy bottles to have was not, it wasn't bourbon, it was vodka and tequila, and they started taking over the market rapidly. Something else was growing in popularity as well, light beer. Consumers wanted less alcohol and calories in their life, and with American whiskey distillers closing down every year, the American whiskey distilleries came up with an idea create a new category of whiskey called light whiskey. So the idea, probably not a great one, was to create a category of light whiskey by distilling the spirit between 180 and 189 proof and then age it in used barrels to create a lighter flavor in the whiskey. The initial results created a spirit that would have very little flavor. So in 1968, a new category was created, light whiskey, with the first product hitting the market after July 1st, 1972. Great idea, distillery marketing guys. <laughs> so consumers were purchasing vodka because it does not have flavor and makes great cocktails. So you get all the punch of alcohol without those, you know, icky barrel flavors that nobody wanted back then. Distillers thought they could make a light whiskey for these drinks and consumers will choose light whiskey over vodka. Now, according to Michael Veach over at bourbonveach.com, uh, he said we saw products like Old Crow Light from National Distillers and QT from Barton Distillery. Now, Brown Foreman even decided to take some eight-year-old whiskey made in Pennsylvania and filter it until there was no color left in the whiskey. The product was called Frost 8 80. It was bottled at 80 proof and looked like dirty water. All that filtering they did just pretty much removed all the flavor and well it supposedly uh, from what i read it tasted like sawdust all these attempts failed miserably and the fact was consumers did not want this new light whiskey flavor in their cocktails they wanted no alcohol flavor at all light whiskey failed and distillers continued to struggle fast forward to the 1980s the best decade ever just saying the music the new york mets mtv and much more the clothes i mean break dancing Come on. Well, also in the 80s, distillers finally started to figure it out. Uh, they needed to sell consumers that whiskey could be enjoyed for its flavor, sell them on the sweet and savory, the fruity and oaky, the caramels and the nuttiness that we all love in bourbon today. And then here came single barrel and small batch products like Blanton's and Booker's respectively. Age statements hit the market with whiskeys that were 10, 12, 15, and even 20 years old. A little bit further down the line into the 90s, Pappy Van Winkle debuted in 1993. Selling the flavors through barrel selections and high age statements actually worked. And consumers started purchasing the super premium brands and the not so premium brands that these high age releases all stem from. So that begs the question, where did all that light whiskey go? Well, like today, the whiskey often ended up being used in blended whiskeys, and most of these one-off brands just went away. But some of that stuff stayed in barrels and was still being used for blends, so even though we didn't see it on the shelf, it never really went away. One distillery that has made a name for themselves with their light whiskey offerings is Cat's Eye Distilling in Iowa. Co-founder Gene Nassif said, I didn't live through the 70s. I think that allowed me to look at light whiskey objectively. While light whiskey may have gotten a bad rap when it was young, as it aged, 
it developed into something truly special. So Cat's Eye sources single barrels of whiskey, typically from MGP, with high proof and high H statements on their labels. All right, so I have two light whiskeys, uh, both from Cat's Eye, that I'm gonna pour here in my glass. We'll get, we'll get into exactly what's in each of these bottles, but light whiskey is very unique. And we're gonna pretty much talk about here what makes a light whiskey a light whiskey. I just wanna say it is not, it does not mean that is half the calories of a regular whiskey or bourbon. I'm just saying, well, it might be, I don't know. I don't have a calorie counter when it comes uh, to whiskeys, but uh, what I can tell you is what exactly makes a light whiskey. So first thing is light whiskey comes off the still typically at 180 to 189 proof, sometimes higher. When compared to bourbon that can't come off the still anywhere higher than 160 proof. Secondly, light whiskey gets put into a used barrel, not a new one like bourbon. On top of that, instead of the typical bourbon mash bill, light whiskey is usually about 97% to 99% corn to make it extra sweet. Now all that makes sense when you think how those distillers in the 70s wanted to make a high alcohol, light flavored spirit for cocktails like vodka. But now that those light whiskeys have gotten some age on them, what exactly do we have now in this bottle? Just everything that the modern whiskey geek loves. High age statements, both of these are 14 years old. Now think of that, this is somewhere along the lines of when you see single malt scotch. Single malt scotch ages in Scotland, which is a pretty dreary climate, and they're typically aged in used barrels. So they need those high age statements to pull the most that they can from those barrels for flavor. Next you have high alcohol content. And even with all that alcohol, super sweet, and easy sipping flavors. That's what we have today with these Obtaniums from Cat's Eye. One is a straight up light whiskey, which is this one, and the other is finished in port wine casks. So we'll see how that translates with the finish. And both are only about 50 bucks. All right guys, so Obtanium is available now in the Midwest, Florida, Tennessee, and California. Has a number of shops that ship. If you Google it, you'll probably find somewhere that may ship this. So I would, uh, if you're interested in trying in these light whiskeys, I would, you know, use the old Google machine. Not like, we didn't have that in the 80s. <laughs> we barely had AOL. All right, enough reminiscing. Let's uh, go to the nose on this thing. So, I mean, the alcohol comes through, but like I said with light whiskey, it's extremely sweet. That high corn content, it's almost got a candy corn tropical note profile to this. There's definitely some, uh, some light caramel here. Man, the, the alcohol from... <laughs> Woo, I went a little too deep, guys. My, uh, the, the schnazola went a little bit too far into the glassola and lit up the sinuses. Here we go. Oh. Yeah, I actually get a little bit of mango pineapple here. Very sweet cotton candy. Almost a little bit of like a strawberry, like, a, uh, like an artificial strawberry in there too. Like I said, very sweet. Yeah, so if you were smelling this for the first time without even realizing it's 147 proof, you know, you may not realize it off the nose. It does come off very sweet, comes off tropical, very candy-like. That's the dangerous thing about these light whiskeys. All right, let's go for a sip. Holy smokes, literally. If I was a cartoon, you'd see like all the smoke coming out of my ears. <laughs> oh my God. But not as much smoke as you would think, or not as much like heat, I would say. it's it's. It's very sweet there. I mean, you do feel the alcohol. The alcohol is there, especially on the first sip. Now, when I've talked to blenders about why they may use light whiskey in a, in a blend, basically it's a good, you know, it's a good whiskey that bridges the gap between the two. You have the light whiskey that can maybe smooth out some of the oakier notes in the, in the whiskey, if, especially if you have a higher age, uh, higher age whiskey in there. And then also the high alcohol and maybe some of the sweetness and, um, you know, some of the, the rich characteristics of it, that high corn content can round out some of the rough edges of the youthful notes. So they kind of talk about it as something that bridges the gap well between the two. Let's go for another sip. One thing that strikes me about this is how oily it is. It's very creamy, very oily, something that high proof, and especially for something that's a light whiskey, you wouldn't think it had like an oily viscosity like this does. Um, it's an interesting category. I think it's something we've seen some other craft distillers. I've seen some local ones here in Ohio uh, start, you know, sourcing and or starting to craft their own light whiskeys as well. Let's go for another sip. This thing is so utterly dangerous. Now I've said that there have been some high proof. I mean, you could talk Elijah Craig barrel proof, rare breed, uh, 
you know, even some of the old Carters I've had that are really high proof, I mean, they drink dangerously easy for their proof point. Gets a little bit crazy. Some, some Texas whiskeys I've had that are really high alcohol content, but drink really easy. This goes right in the category, but maybe even a, bit, a little bit step above. Being 147 proof, I mean, geez, you would think that this is just gonna absolutely blow your palate up. And maybe in the first couple sips it does, but once you start getting used to this thing, it is like just drinking sweet candy. Front of the palate, caramel. That, definitely that candy corn note. Mid palate, a little bit of mango. Maybe like a, like a, like a fruit roll up. I, I, I remember explaining it as like, you got this really intensely, almost artificially sweet, uh, like fruit flavor coming through right in the mid palate. Then on the back end, you get a little bit, little, little tiny hit of oak. You still get your vanillas in there. Remember, it's been in the barrel for like 14 years, so it's pulling out some of the vanillin in there as well. So it's got really nice texture. It's really good. It's, it's just one of those things like light whiskey. Not sure a lot of you know what it is or where it came from, but hopefully this guides you a little bit. Now next, we're gonna do the port finished one. Now, this one spent about six weeks in a port cask. Uh, you could definitely tell by the color, so you guys could see in the close-ups. It's got a big like copper punch to it. Let's go to the nose, here we go. I mean, straight up Luxardo cherries. Look, I mean, if you guys make old fashions like I do, with that Luxardo cherry, the Luxardo syrup. That's what you smell. It's not as concentrated, maybe not as sugary sweet, but there is a very rich cherry note on here. You get some of the, like the musty oak that you get in a, uh, in a port wine as well, which I think is a nice note for this because it balances out that intense sweetness from the light whiskey, you know, that light whiskey already inherently has. I actually get a little cinnamon raisin in here too. Yeah, very, I mean, the rich cherries, berries, whatever you want to call it. It's so concentrated and rich. All right, let's try this one. Mm. So this one is not as high as a proof. Uh, this one comes in at 64.6% ABV. So we're looking at about 128 and change. 129, call it. Uh, really good, really good sipper. This one sips a little bit easier. I think the port wine rounded out the, the maybe the rough edges the high alcohol content and it's just giving you pure like candy go for another sip i remember growing up when um you know i had a cough or a cold i would i would eat those ludens cherry cough drops like constantly that's what that reminds me of a little bit a little bit of the ludens but luxardo cherry kind of wrapped around it it's got the nice musty funky like barrel notes from a good port wine too I actually might like this a little bit over the regular one. The, the regular one's very good, but this I just think has the perfect combination of, you get the extra layers of sweet, but you also get the rounded out edges, the, and, the, uh, and, and like I said, the musty and the funky notes from the barrel that kind of just give it another layer, a little bit more depth. Yeah, raisins, cherries, maybe a little hint of uh, fig. But again, that, that cherry, uh, that Luden's cough drop, it's great. I, I would say if you guys see light whiskey or you see a label out there from a, from a craft distillery that says light whiskey on it, uh, I feel like hopefully that I've given you enough education, you know exactly what it is, uh, you, you know what to expect a little bit when, you, when you're thinking about picking up a light whiskey. This is why it has such high alcohol content. This is why it's so sweet. This is why it's used in blends, a little bit of the history of it. If you haven't dove into light whiskey, again, it has all the things we all love. It's got high H statements. It's got a lot of sweet flavors. Uh, it's got high alcohol content, but does not drink that way. So uh, check out Obtanium. I think this is some really, really good source stuff. If you could find one of the port finished ones, definitely look for it. I think, I mean, the regular light whiskey is really good too. Uh, I love what Cat's Eye is doing, uh, but I mean, choosing it to finish in a, in a, in a port uh, barrel, I think, just did it another world of good, giving it another layer of sweetness. So, yeah, check them out. Check out Light Whiskey, and hopefully it's another, uh, you know, just a, another category of whiskey you could possibly add to your shelf and your, and your palate. All right, guys, well, hope you enjoyed this review. As we took a look at the history of Light Whiskey, what it is, and also took a close look at Cat's Eye Distilling and the Obtanium Light Whiskeys 
coming from there right now. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know down in the comments if you've had any of the Obtaniums yet, if you've had light whiskey, if you knew what the history was, uh, and always love hearing what you guys say. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, candy in a glass, dangerous. Take care everybody, I'll see you next time on The Mass and Drum.